Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang, and welcome to Nightwear. This series of videos demonstrates the advanced Deep Sky document, perhaps the heart and soul of Deep Sky Planner 4. This demonstration is being done on a laptop computer running Vista Home Premium 32-bit edition. Let's get started by opening an advanced Deep Sky search document. You can do that by selecting the File menu and the Advanced Deep Sky menu item, or you can do it by selecting the Advanced Deep Sky search document toolbar button, or if you use the drop down button, you can see a list of all the catalogs in Deep Sky Planner 4. By selecting one of these buttons, you'll open the document with the catalog pre-selected. So in this case, I'll choose the Herschel catalog. The Advanced Deep Sky document is opened and the Herschel 400 catalog is pre-selected for search. Let's start by having a quick overview of the Advanced Deep Sky document. There are quite a few search criteria that you can specify for a catalog search. The General tab contains things like location and object number. The other tabs specify many other filtering criteria like magnitude, size, etc. Let's start by looking at the location for which ephemeral data items will be computed in this report. Ephemeral data items include things like rise and set time of an object, transit and best time to view an object, and the altitude and azimuth of an object at a specific time. By the way, the ephemeral data require you to specify a date and time in the ephemeris date tab. We'll get to that in a few minutes. First, uh, the location is set when you open a new document to your favorite location as specified in the Location Manager. Here is your Location Manager. You're free to scroll through the list of locations in your favorite area. This helps to keep the list short so that, in this example, these are all locations in the database that are in the North America or United States area. Next, you might select the Exclude Objects checkbox to filter out of your report listing all objects that are at a declination that can never be seen from the latitude of the selected location. Next, you might like to specify the objects for your report by object designation, be that either a sequential catalog number, an alphanumeric catalog designator or a common name. The Herschel catalog, as we have already selected, is not a sequentially numbered catalog. It is an alphanumerically named catalog, and any uh, object name would have the format suggested here, a number and a dash and another number. You would specify those things here in the name edit box. It does support wildcard characters star and question mark as you're used to in the DOS command days. Another catalog we might select is the Caldwell catalog to demonstrate a catalog that contains sequentially numbered objects. Here you would specify a range of object numbers to include in the report. And here's a little hint to help you remember which numbers are valid for the selected catalog. If you see a zero in either of these range items, then that means that the range item is unlimited, meaning if you want to report on all items greater than 10, called well 10, you'd put a 10 in lowest and leave highest at zero. Next, you can select from the Observed group box items that you either have placed in your log or have not. 
If you don't care whether it's in the log or not, you want it in the report, choose Ignore. If you want to include items in your report that you have not observed, you can choose No. And if you want only items that you have observed in the past and recorded in your log, you would choose Yes. So, I'm going to set this to Ignore for this example. I'm going to go back and choose the Herschel catalog. And as you can see, catalog number was disabled, so I need to re-enable Ignore. One last thing is something that you can use to help you remember all the many settings that appear on the other tabs, and that is this Search Options Summary box. You can see each tab name and a synopsis of what appears on that tab. So you can see currently the Magnitude tab is set to Ignore Objects Magnitude in completing the report, and likewise for the other tabs. And there are the rest. That concludes this discussion of the general tab in the Advanced Deep Sky document. Please stay tuned for further videos explaining the rest of the tabs and how to use the Deep Sky report. Thanks for watching.